By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another Timmy Talks Top 10. Wait, 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 wait a minute. This is not a top 10. This is a top 6 because this is episode 666. Episode 666 on Timmy Talks. Isn't that crazy? And to celebrate this, I've decided to go for a top six of demons because, of course, 666 is the number of El Diablo. Let's take a look at the six most fierce demons in old school magic, The Gathering. So this top six of demons is made up out of the sets Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and, of course, the four expansions, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, Legends, and The Dark. So that's the card pool where I got the six demon creatures out of. Now, before we start with the top six, let's listen to some spooky little music to kind of get in the mood and let's take a look at what actually is the definition of a demon. An evil spirit or devil, especially one thought to possess a person or act as a tormentor in hell. That is the definition of a demon. And when I think of magic and demons, the first card that pops up in my mind is this card, the Demonic Tutor. What a beautiful card, beautiful art by Douglas Schuler, and so incredibly good, maybe even too good. I mean, making a deal with the devil is pretty good. For one black and one, you can look up any card you want. That's fantastic. At no life cost. I think that's kind of a flavor fill. I think maybe you should lose like half your life when you cast Demonic Tutor. A fun fact to know about the Demonic Tutor, by the way, is that the German version has flavor text from Faust, so go check that out later. Um, for for now, we are going to continue with our top six, but first, I have to start with two honorable mentions. And here are the honorable mentions. We've got Stone Throwing Devils and we have Molt Demon, so two honorable mentions here. Stone Throwing Devils technically is not a demon because it's a summon devil, but when we look at the definition, it also said that a demon is kind of a devil. Anyway, I didn't include it into this list because it is a devil and it's not a demon creature type, but still I wanted to show it here. And the cool thing about this is it's the only devil in old school magic, summon devil, and it's also banned. The artwork is banned, so it's like a double devil, double trouble, so it's super cool. And then we've got Mold Demon. Look at that art of Mold Demon. I mean, Jesper Mirforce, he makes the coolest stuff. Have you ever seen Word of Command? That's just, ooh, I love it. Anyway, this art is currently for sale. What do you think it costs? $25,000 if you want to own the original art of Molt Demon. I just uh, looked it up here on the internet and found it. I'm like, whoa, that is insane. Anyway, these are my two honorable mentions. And yes, Molt Demon is pretty mediocre. I agree with you on that. Anyway, let's start with the top six, starting with number six. And on number six, kicking off the list, we find Lady Orca. So Lady Orca is seven mana, a red, a black, and five for a summon legend from Legends. And she is a 7-4 creature. So I love the 7 power. Don't like the 4 toughness so much. And then uh, she, she has no ability. So she's a vanilla creature. But the flavor text is still pretty cool. So let's just read that for a moment. It says, I do not remember what he said to her. I remember her fiery eyes fixed upon him for an instant. I remember a flash and the hot breath of sudden flames made me turn away. When I looked again, Angus was gone. So this talks, of course, about this guy, Angus McKenzie. So Lady Orca killed Angus McKenzie. Now then you're a pretty badass. Still, I wish they would have given her five toughness and maybe some kind of, you know, deal damage to something or fire breathing ability. I mean, check that flavor text would have made sense. Anyway, let's continue with number five. And on number five, we find this cool dude, the Wretched. Again, love the art of this demon. Two black and three to cast his summon Wretched. Also a card from Legends. It is a two five creature with a pretty cool ability. It reads, at the end of combat, take control of all creatures that blocked the Wretched. The Wretched does not tap or untap these creatures. You lose control of these creatures if the Wretched leaves play or if you lose control of the Wretched. Now that is of course the big problem, right? When you attack with this, why would they, you know, block it, for example, on a 3-3? Why would they do that knowing that you would gain control of that? So they'll probably double block and kill it. But there are a few tricks. For example, you can play the Wretched together with False Orders. False Orders is a really cool instant from Red where you can decide how your opponent is going to block. So then you can assign the creature, for example, a 3-3 Hill Giant to block the Wretched. The Hill Giant survives. The Wretched survives. 
you get the hill giant, right? It's a pretty good deal. But you can even make it more extreme. What if you put a lure on the wretched, meaning that your opponent now has to block with all the creatures that he can when the wretched attacks? The problem, of course, is the wretched will die. Now, there are a few tricks to keep the wretched alive. One of those tricks is after blockers are declared, but before damage is dealt, you can use your Maze of If to take the wretched out of combat. That is probably the best way to go. You can do the same thing with Thicket Basilisk and Lure as well, by the way, but that's a different top 10, I guess. Anyway, um, what I find really cooler with this is by keeping it in green. Maybe make a black green enchantress deck or something and put a regeneration on the wretched. Like regeneration, you don't see that card anymore, but it used to be played quite a lot. So one green and one for an enchant creature. Very simple, pay a green, regenerate it. So what you can do now, attack with the wretched, with the lure, and the regeneration on it. Your opponent has to block the wretched with all the creatures. Of course, the wretched will probably get lethal damage, but that doesn't matter because you regenerate it with regeneration and then you get all the creatures of your opponent. Haha, <laughs> I mean, isn't that a cool way to play magic? That is the way, right? Anyway, this is number five. Now let's continue with number four. And on number four, we find a card that maybe you expected to be higher upon this list, and that card is Demonic Hordes. Look at this beauty, three black and three to cast for a 5-5 five, five summon demon that can destroy lands, because let's read that text, tap to destroy one land, pay a BBB, I love that alpha wording, it's black, 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 during your upkeep or the hordes become tapped and you lose a land of opponent's choice. So the cool thing about this card is the rules have changed, of course, in Magic since 1993 when this card was printed. Because back in the day, what I remember is, but maybe we were playing it wrong, if you couldn't pay the upkeep cost, you would be, you know, you wouldn't be in a good spot because you would tap your own Demonic Horde. You have to during your upkeep. It's not a May ability. You have to tap it. And then your opponent, not even you, your opponent gets to choose what land they want to destroy. So that's absolutely horrible. But with the new ruling, what you can do is as a response to that, while that's still on the stack, you can tap your Demonic Hordes and destroy a land at the side of your opponent. Now, after that, your opponent can still destroy one of your lands. You know, that's up to your opponent's choice. But at least it's a land for a land trait, making the Demonic Hordes a little bit more playable, in my opinion. And there is actually an enchant creature that I think makes this card a lot better. And that card is Instal Energy. So just one green and you can untap your Demonic Hordes an extra time. So let's say you can't even pay the upkeep cost. Then still you can destroy a land of your opponent. And then in your main phase, you can untap the Hordes again maybe attack with it or destroy another land, you know, so you can kind of use it twice, even if you cannot pay the upkeep cost. So I think that made this card a lot more playable. That's at least my humble opinion. Let me know what you think about the Demonic Hordes. And now let's continue with number three on the list. And on number three, we find a personal favorite of mine, Yakmov Demon, a card from Antiquity 6-6, Flying First Strike, with an upkeep cost, and we're gonna talk about that later, but first let's focus on the casting cost and the power and toughness. Have you seen it? Six to cast, six power, six toughness. It's the only demon on the list today that has triple six, 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 six. It's actually the only demon in old school that has six, six, six. So, I mean, maybe I should have put it on one here because besides that awesome six, six, six stats, it's also a pretty useful card because I already said it's flying in first strike, which is pretty good for six mana, but the downside is not that bad because during your upkeep, you may, may, so it's a choice, you may sacrifice an artifact to keep it untapped. If you don't, the uh, demon becomes tapped and deals two points of damage to you. Now, I think two points of damage is not that much. You can survive that hit. And again, it's a may ability. So if it makes no sense to attack your opponent, you can just say, you know what, my demon is going to become tapped, I take two points of damage. Now, of course, when you play with Yakmov Demon in your deck, you're going to think about a sack outlet. You want to have artifacts to sack to it. So actually, the demon, of course, is a sack outlet, but you want to have artifacts to throw to the demon so that the demon can use those. And the most obvious one, in my opinion, is the Mana Vault, because Mana Vault is mana ramp, right? You can pay it out for one, you can tap it, gain three mana pr pretty quickly, use it to play out your, your demon, perhaps, on, a, on turn three, if you're lucky, you know, have a 6-6 six, six flying. And then the next turn, instead of taking the damage from the tap mana vault, you're going to sack it to the demon. I mean, it's quite simple. And then you can play some more, you know, Moxen, for example, feed some Moxen to it. Um, but there's also another strategy, because like I said, 
the paying of an artifact is a May ability. So what you can also do is not pay, let the demon become tapped, and then you can use this artifact, Jander's Saddlebacks, to untap it again and then attack with it. So that's another strategy. And there's a third strategy as well, and that is try to make uh, tokens. So you can play with the Hive or, to, or with Serpent Generator, but I actually prefer to play with this creature, the Tetravus, which is six mana for a 1-1 flyer that comes into play with three plus one plus one counters during your upkeep. Here we are at the upkeep again. That's what I love about old school, by the way, that the upkeep is still an important phase. And the upkeep is before you draw a card, make it even more important. Anyway, that's our, that are just my two cents about the upkeep. I love the upkeep. Um, so during your upkeep, you can take the counters off of the Tetravis and make one one Tetravite creatures. So you can make a total of four creatures, artifact creatures with one Tetravis. Right, and then you can feed those, of course, to your demon. So you've got four turns of an untapped demon to go after you've played your Tetravis. So that is a pretty good bang for your buck. So that would be my personal favorite combination to make. That's something that I'm actually currently building on. But before we turn this top six into a deck deck, let's continue, uh, continue shall we? So uh, we're gonna continue with number two here on this list. Wow, we are already at number two, almost at number one spot, but on number two, we find a super playable demon, perhaps the most playable demon of this entire list, because here it is, it is Solkanar, the Swamp King. And this card just has great stats. It's five mana for a five five with only upsides. It's got Swamp Walk, and every time somebody plays a black spell, you gain a life. This is really good. I guess the only downside is that you need to have blue, black, and red to cast it, so you've gotta have a good mana plan, but in old school, that's actually pretty easy. And you see this card in old school decks. This card is actually played at tournaments, which is pretty cool. I think it's the only card in this list that actually sees regular play at tournaments. Um, obviously, I thought of some cards you can use to combine with this. And the first card that pops into my mind is Cyclopean Tomb and Evil Presence. Both cards kind of do the same. They make sure that your opponent has swamps. I kind of prefer Cyclopean Tomb because of the art, it's so cool. So Cyclopean Tomb is a mono artifact that uh, says two and tap, turn any one non-swamp land into a swamp during your upkeep, mark the changed lands with a token. Uh, that's so cool, so with a little glass B, that's what we usually use. If Cyclopean Tomb is destroyed, this is really weird what happens. So if Cyclopean Tomb is destroyed, remove one token of your choice, each upkeep returning that land to its original nature. So you can choose when what land flips. You gotta choose one every turn, but I mean, it's kinda insane. You would expect with an effect like this, as soon as the tomb uh, leaves the battlefield, all the lands would go back to normal, but no, it's just one every single turn. So that is, I find that kinda cool. So then you can attack with your Swampwalk army even longer. Talking about that army, there are a lot of cards there. You've got, you can use this guy to Bok Wrath, uh, but also you've got the Lost Soul. Of course, you can play it also with Zombie Master, make like a zombie deck with your Soul Canar kind of as an extra king next to the Zombie Master. There's just a lot of cool stuff you can do with the Swamp Walk theme. But like I said at the start, this card is good enough on its own. You can just play it in your deck on its own. Play a one-off, maybe even two if you're playing these colors anyway. It is really, really a good and solid card. Talking about a good card, let's continue to number one. And on number one, we find the only demon that has a reference in the Alpha Rulebook, and that is, of course, Lord of the Pits. So Lord of the Pit is a D-O-G demon, right? When I think about a demon, I think about Lord of the Pit. Well, and Demonic Tutor, but I also think about Lord of the Pit. What an absolutely epic creature. And in the Alpha Rulebook, it is a referenced to by a battle between two wizards, Fortzel and Tomiel, and Tomiel casts the Lord of the Pit, what will eventually be his downfall. So it's so flavorful. And I mean, I think Lord of the Pit, if you have it, you have to put it in a deck and you have to play it, right? Let's take a look at what the card actually does. So it's three black and four to cast. So seven mana for a seven, seven, right? So we've got a triple seven, which is kind of the lucky number. So another triple six. And it's got flying and trample. So how many black creatures do you know with trample? They're not that many. So that's a really good ability in black. And during your upkeep, you uh, can sacrifice a creature if you cannot, then the Lord of the Pit deals seven damage to you, but you can still attack with it. That is the cool thing. You can still attack. So take the seven and attack. Now, there are a few ways to kind of play with this. And one of the ways is combining it with the Circle of Protection Black, because the Circle of Protection Black can prevent the seven damage that the Lord deals to you. So you prevent the damage 
and then you attack. It's kind of similar than those decks that use Force of Nature and COP Green. And if you're going on that route, you can also choose to play with Deflays. You can maybe play with Northern Paladin. So, you know, I, I think there's a whole deck to build here. It's probably been done before, but I haven't seen it lately. I've seen a few people try, but they didn't do very well at tournaments. And it would be great if people out there, you know, start maybe brewing with Lord of the Pit again. And then, of course, there's also another card that you can add in that same deck, and that is Preacher. I really think I like Preacher and Lord of the Pit out of, uh, from a flavor standpoint as well. Um, but also because it's just good, because what does Preacher do? It's a card from the dark, two white and one for a 1-1. One, one. You can tap it, and then your opponent has to give you one of their creatures. And, of course, you're going to give that creature to your Lord of the Pit during your upkeep, right? So it's going to eat up the uh the the creatures that you get through preacher then you're going to untap preacher again and you're going to steal more creatures so that way you can kind of very slowly destroy the board of your opponent and at the same time of course attacking with lord of the pit and again the cool thing about the lord of the pit is if you cannot pay the upkeep cost it doesn't tap itself you just take seven that's all and you can still attack with it so i mean i think this card is is i want i don't want to say pretty good but i think it's playable and in my opinion it has to be the number one here in our top six of demons. Let's take a look at our final top six demons list. And here we see all our six cards together, the top six demons in old school magic. And I have a little uh, trivia question for you. How many demons do you think there are in total in old school magic? I'm not counting fallen empires, although I don't think there's a demon in fallen empires, is there? Anyway, so check out Alpha, Beta, Unlimited and the Four Horsemen sets. And let me know in the comments below how many demons are there. Or maybe make a guess first before you look. It is really funny. Anyway, these are the six demons in my top six. Let me know what you think of my list. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, by the way, take a moment to hit that like button, uh, share this content on your socials, and of course, leave a comment. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about all that stuff, there's also a Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks, and there you can find out how you can support the channel financially. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. It already starts with $1 a month, and there are some really cool perks. One of those perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Thank you to Samba Kazee!